In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how I prepare sodium metal to put into my cells. For this, I'm going to need uh, a fat marker. I'm going to need my pasta press. I'm going to need a whole bunch of wipes and uh, a cutter. In this case, I have a handheld cutter. Uh, of course, I'm going to need my sodium metal. <laughs> and this one's from a well-known chemical supplier. Now, it probably shouldn't need to be said, but before you start, it is essential that you check your water vapor in your glove box. I always make sure mine is below 0.5 ppm because naturally any water will react violently with sodium and it will ruin your day. <laughs> so make sure before you start, your water vapor in your glove box is well under control for safety reasons. Now, if your sodium arrives in a large canister, you also wanna make sure before you open that canister that it's been sealed in a inert environment, obviously. Um, this one I keep sealed in my own bag. And if when you open the bag, you recheck the water vapor and it's gone up, well then you want to wait for it to get filtered out. So to start, I'm going to get some wipes out because this sodium comes packaged as cubes and they're swimming in mineral oil. As you can probably see right there. So these cubes, they're around a gram each if you were to weigh them. And I'm gonna want to dab off as much of that mineral oil as I can. I use tweezers, but probably you'd want longer ones if you were ordering them just for this purpose. Reach in and grab cube. Okay. And I reseal it. Last thing I want is that to spill. You'll see the cube is wet with mineral oil. I'll dab it off, but I don't have to worry about that mineral oil evaporating and filling up my solvent filter. It's also quite nice to have a, a wet wipe to mop up any mystery powders in the area. The first step because the cube itself won't yet fit into the pasta press, I do have to squish it down to fit between the rollers. Now, what I use a marker for this. I really just need to squish it a bit. And you'll see it's very soft, easy to press. Get that. That should fit as it is. So now I'll move over to my pasta press. If you've used one of these to make pasta before, the principle is exactly the same. You want to start with your biggest gap size and then progressively with each roll go to a narrower gap size.
Now, as I do this, you'll see the shimmer increase as the surface is pulled and stretched. I only use this pasta press for my sodium metal. The first few are very easy. Then as the gap size narrows, you will see that the sodium metal starts to stick a bit to the rollers. And there are a few ways of mitigating that. Right here, I'm going to put it on its side so that I have a bit more of a rectangular shape instead of a noodle. And you'll see it's stuck to that roller. I want to be very careful when I pull it off that it doesn't tear. And I'll show you a trick that I've used to try to mitigate that tearing. And the slower you go, the less likely you will have tears. At this point, I'm getting it sticking a lot. So what I like to try to do is use some old separator that I'm never going to use to try to stop it sticking. You could probably use paper too. So if I carefully keep that sodium in the separator, that will stop it from sticking to my rollers and tearing. Let's see if I can get that to fit. That's working out pretty well. Getting a bit of separator dust on the rollers. I'm at my narrowest gap size now, so I have to be really careful. This will get me the thinnest possible sheet. Now, if a piece tears, it's not the end of the world you could reconnect it, but the seam will not connect very well. So I tend to keep those torn bits aside and use them as reference electrodes in my cell. All right, so that's as thin as I'm gonna get it for practical purposes. My reusable cell takes 18 millimeter discs, which doesn't fit that great on this magnetic holder. So I need to make sure it's centered so that I get a proper cut. The good news is the sodium metal is quite forgiving. So I can quite easily cut without any paper, or other items to assist. And you'll see I didn't even get a proper cut there, but because the sodium metal is so soft, I can quite easily
finish the edges myself. As so. That disc I can use right away. I might want to scrape the surface to try to remove some of the passivating film on top of it that can be seen from the dull color compared to the edge. It will also cut well in a bench top disc cutter. You'll see over here an older piece of sodium metal I rolled previously which looks shiny because I've buffed the surface and stored it in a sealed bag. When I buff, I actually use a piece of cardboard to scrape the surface. And I get a visually cleaner finish. I'll store this, whatever I don't use today, in a sealed baggie and use it as I need it. 